Okay, here's the warm-up on 1.4. Uh, here's the graph that's originally there, and that's called f of x. And what happens if we apply these transformations to it? This is what we did in uh, 1.3. So remember that the, the way to think about this is anything happened in terms of reflections, stretches, or translations. Let's apply them in that order. Uh, when we do the motion, the and you can kind of go through this thing and file them in this list however you uh, like however you want. But just remember that when we do it, we have to do the R's, the S's, and the T's. This two is one of the stretch ones. It's outside the parentheses, so it's a Y direction stretch. So this is a vertical, and when it's that type out in front, it goes the the way you expect it to. It's a vertical expansion of a factor of two, and that takes care of that. And then the four. Inside here is the horizontal kind of x-direction translation, but it's going to be left by 4. Okay, um, so let me... Table values optional? Okay, great. I'll just kind of do this one at a time. I'm going to vertically stretch each point by 2, and then I'm going to move it to the left by 4. So I'll vertically stretch this point by 2, and then I'll move it 4 to the left. It goes over there. Vertically stretch this by 2, which would be that way, 2, and then I go to the left 4, I think it's going to be here. Vertically stretch, uh, I could do these points if you want me to, 0, shift, sorry, vertical shift by factor of 2 doesn't go anywhere, but then I can go 4 to the left, it's here. Vertically stretch this point by 2, 2 goes to 4, and then I go 4 to the left. This point stretched by 2 vertically goes to 8, then 4 to the left. Vertically stretched by 2, then 4 to the left. Vertically stretched by 2, then 4 to the left. Vertically stretched by 2 goes down here, and then 4 to the left. It looks something like this. If I can connect these correctly, it looks something like that. Uh, this is my version of this thing as I'm doing it by now. But if you look on the um, Schoology, you'll find someone else has done this, and it looks a little prettier, and it's all done in all straight lines and nice stuff like that. So uh, there's, there's a better version to look at a static uh, page like that. Okay, this function, um, what happens if we do all these things to it? Um, again, let's make our list, uh, describe the transformations in order. Here's R's, then the S's, then T's. We can just kind of go through the list here, and then this will give us the right order. The one-third is a stretch. That's a vertical compression of one-third. Uh, the negative in here is a reflection over the uh, y-axis. I'm putting little dashes in front of these. That's not really a negative. That's just a little dash. Like there's a dash here. Sorry. Uh, the plus five is, of course, left five, and the four is up four. So that's what we have, and that's all you have to do. Really. Okay. If we want to figure out what's the the kind of corresponding point from negative four six on the original graph of f of x, I want to figure out how this operates. Um, and what do I need to put in here for x so that I can use this fact and figure out what g of x is going to be? Okay. So I need so essentially what I know right now is, really all I know is that the f of negative 4, is what this means, oh, that's a negative 4. f of negative 4 is 6. I don't want to select that, I just want to write it. Okay. f of negative 4 is, oh gosh, just a second, is, ah, sorry, <laughs> f of negative 4 is 6. Okay. So to make, negative, so make this so that it's operating on negative 4, I need to figure out the correct x if this is going to come from uh, negative x plus 5, I need to figure out what x needs to be, that's a plus, 5 for this to work. So I need negative x plus 5 to equal negative 4, first of all, to figure out what x I need to, sorry, what x I need to start with. Uh, 4 is going to equal x plus 5, so my x that I'm going to start with is going to be negative 1. Okay, so let's put negative 1 into this mess. So separate that out. Um, one third f of negative negative 1 plus 5 plus 4 is what I'm trying to, that's a 4 again, I can't make 4s, uh, is what this is going to work. I, I did that, I, the reason I did that, oh sorry, the reason I did that was so that when I went to go ahead and apply f, it's telling me this, right? That's why I did all that front loading. Because I know what f of negative 4 is, it's the only thing I know about what, what to do with f, and it's because it's up there. So that part right there is 6. Woohoo. Okay, so what I'm doing. And one third of six plus four is two plus four, which is six. So the point that's associated with negative four six on the graph is remember I put this in this I figured out that this x here is going to be negative one. 
And what it spit out after all of that was six. Six wasn't exactly the same. Six kind of got moved around and added to four. Uh, after I did the translation, that's, that's kind of how it ended up. Okay. Warm well, number three, the graph here is transformed according to the information below. Write an equation for each new graph in terms of f of x. So if I transform without any, using, any reflections or stretches, so that the maximum changes to 2, 0. So if I'm not using any reflections and I'm not using any kind of stretches, the only thing I can possibly use is going to be t. I have to use a translation to get this thing so that the, the current maximum here, and again, it's not going to flip over anything, so this point has to turn into the new maximum. If that new maximum goes down here to negative 2, 0, which is like there, the translation I have to apply, is a, if, it, if I was going to use geometric notation, is it has to go 2 to the left and it has to go 4 down. In other words, um, what I'm going to have to do in terms of f of x notation, to make it go 2 to the left, I have to put a plus 2 in here. And to make it go 4 down, I had, whoops, that's a minus. I have to make a minus 4 on the outside. Three transformations, so that the domain of the new function is negative 4, positive 4, and the range is negative 6, positive 2. All right, the original domain here is from negative 8 to positive 8. So what needs to happen here is this thing needs to get shrunk this way by 2. And the range is from negative 6 to positive 2. Well, this original range is 4 to 4, looks like. So this is the correct size. It has like a height of 8, but it needs to go up. Sorry, it needs to go down by 2. So instead of going from negative 4 to positive 4, it's going to go from negative 6 to positive 2. That means that whole thing, it stays the same size. Whoa, what happened there? It stays the same size. It just moves. I just translated my page. It, it moves down two units so that it occupies this new, this new window that's described here. So this is a stretch, and this is a translate. So let's do that in order. This stretch is going to make it f of, uh, if it's a horizontal, it's on the inside, and it's not what we think. So it's half there. Uh, x and then the down two is at the end. I did. I made a mistake already. Uh, this little thing where I said get smaller by two. If it's getting smaller by half, this has to be a two in here. Remember, because I, I think I even said this goes the opposite way. Then one other problem. Uh, this has only been two transformations, right? It's been a stretch and it's been a translate. It says three transformations. Well, I need to perform another transformation that doesn't change any of these facts because I've already got it in the right window, kind of domain and range wise. But if I was to reflect it, since this is centered at, 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 on the axis here. If I was to flip this over the x, or sorry, the y axis, it wouldn't change. So if I put a negative in here, I can introduce a third transformation just for the sake of having three transformations that will still keep it in the same window. Okay, the new stuff for today is really this. Um, if you're given any two functions, it might ask you to do things with them like add f and g or multiply f times g or divide f times g or take the f of the g. Right, so um, there's some algebra here at first that just kind of is a reminder of how to do some of these things with like terms that you haven't done in a while. I'll pause and do this because it's really tedious. Better yet, I'll just use them because they're already done. This handwriting is better than mine anyway. So this is, remember how to combine like terms. Remember when you see parentheses to distribute. Uh, just check over these and make sure that you would have done them the same way. Uh, accelerated math kids, I'm not generally worried about this thing for you. Foiling, foiling when one of the, um, one of the, Coefficients is not one, and yeah, we should combine like terms because yeah, these kind of skills we're going to need when we compose things to decide if things are inverses and stuff like that. So this is just a good old-fashioned algebra one reminder. Okay, um, let me go back to another doc. Yeah, so now they're not all pre-filled out. Okay, so observe the two different function machines. X goes into the 2x minus 1 machine and comes out as, well, whatever 2x minus 1 is. And g of x does x squared plus 3. If I'm finding the f of 2, just a reminder what that means. That means we're going to take 2 times 2 minus 1. And of course, that's 3. And g of 2, this is why we need to pay attention to f versus g. g of 2 is 2 squared plus 3, which is 7. So you input uh, negative 1 into the function machine for f of x. What do you do? It's the, it's the same thing we just did above. f of negative 1, put negative 1 into this machine, and it should come out as negative 3, because it's negative, oh, it's negative 4 minus, sorry, it's negative 2 minus 1. Now take that input for f and directly stick it into the g machine. Which is which? Which is we're doing now is we're, it's asking us right now to find g of negative three. We're going to see in a second though that the fancier way for the whole thing we've just done is we took. Uh, sorry, I did that wrong. We're finding g of actually finding g of f of negative one. That's a parenthesis. This is really bad. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, g of negative three is nine plus three, which gives us twelve. 
All right, so that what we just did there was called function composition. It's when you take the output from one function and directly stick it into another function. So um, and you, you heard me say f of g of x or g of f of x. You can read that at your ledger, but what does that really mean uh, like on a symbolic level? Or let's actually do some. What's g of f of negative 1? Well, we can find just the f of negative 1 part. That's not bad. We should do that first. f of negative 1, and I believe we've already done this. This is negative 3. Oh, gosh, what, that happened again? What? I'm translating. I don't mean to be translating. Sorry about that. Hope no one's getting seasick. If I take f of negative 1, I should get negative 3. And then to take g of negative 3 is really what, what's going on here. And the g of negative 3 turned out to be 12. Find the equation for g of f of x. Like in general, what happens if we're doing, we're operating g on all of f of x? f of, f of x is a whole function, right? So that's like we're trying to say, okay, what's g of 2x minus 1? which is a little bit different now because it's not just a variable, it's a, or not just a number, it's a whole, a whole expression. Well, the G machine takes inputs, like another way to read this, is the G machine takes inputs, squares them, and adds three. Well, now the input is all of this. So what all that means is we're going to apply this structure with this as the input. So we take 2x minus 1 squared plus 3, and that's f of g of x. At evaluate f of g of negative 1. Okay, now this is in a different order. Remember we're working inside the parentheses first? That's just why our, our geometric notation always kind of looks like this too, where the, the the transformation or the function that's closer to the action happens first, and then we pack on the subsequent ones onto the left. Anyway, g of negative 1 is negative uh, 1 squared plus 3, that's 4. So what I'm really looking for is f of 4, and f of 4 should be 7. Okay, find the equation for f of g of x. I'm running out of space here in one screen. So really want to take f of g of x, and g of x is all this, and f of that, f takes inputs, multiplies them by 2 and subtracts 1, so 2 times that mess, and then subtract 1. You could simplify that if you need to, but it's not necessarily required. So notice how f of g of x, this one, looks different than g of f of x. Because they're kind of applied, it's almost like order of operations has been changed at some level. Okay, find f of g of 3. Um, you could use these pictures if you want to, but you don't really need to. g of 3, let's find this that by itself. g of 3 is uh, 6 minus 4 is 2. So really what I'm looking for here is f of 2. And f of 2 is, oh my gosh, 4 minus 6 minus, so 4 minus 6 plus 2, I think think is zero. I'm going to cheat here and look at the other doc. What do they have? Yep, they have zero. Okay, good for me. All right, this notation is just a different way, and it looks familiar from our, from our geometry stuff. This means exactly the same as f of g, come on, of x exactly like this. Uh, this means the same thing as g of f of x. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to I want to get this video done before 15 minutes. So that's what that's what that means, and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to put the the g of x equation in for the input as as what used to be x. Now that's replaced with all of g of x, uh, and and to simplify is actually shown here too. And are these are, are those the same when you did that? Obviously, no, they're not. I'll say no for this, so you can remember that. Uh, okay, this is where it starts to get interesting. This is probably the last and most interesting and hardest thing you're going to have to do for this for this section. In fact, this is the last example. Okay, reading out of the graph is not so hard. G of 0, okay, G is this one. G of 0 is 3. Great. What's F of G of 6? Well, G of 6 is actually this point right here. G of 6 is negative 1. Now think about that negative 1. Put that in as the input for F. F of negative 1 is negative 2. That's kind of strange. G of f of 4. Well, what's f of 4? That's a 4. I can't make 4s. That's a 4. f of 4 is, okay, this is f. f of 4 is 3. g of 3 is really what we're looking at on here. And g is this one. g of 3 is 2. For what values is f of x greater than g of x? It's whenever x is on top. So it's this zone and then this zone. Let me write that in. So these are the areas where f is on top, and it says equal to. This is why I put hard brackets there. And then the rest of the interval is where it's the opposite way, where f is less than, but it's not included. So it looks like this. And whew, I got uh, done before the video thing cut me off. Anyway, uh, the, again, the prettier document of this uh, answer key uh, with better handwriting and, and fancier colors is also saved on Schoology. See you, see you later.